Well, here we are. After making teams for years, I got another series for you guys. Honestly, this series has been on my mind for a while, but I felt like it was finally time to give it a go. With that, I welcome you to the most underrated team for Kanto, Fire Red and Leaf Green Edition. Now, some of you might be asking, why not start with Red and Blue? Well, back in the day, the original best team for Kanto started with Fire Red and Leaf Green, so I wanted to stay true to that tradition. Before I get into the most underrated team for Kanto, let's get into some guidelines that some of you probably know when it comes to the team series here on the channel, but in case you don't, here you go. What I will be considering for an underrated team are simply Pokemon I deem as pretty good, but not great. Think of these Pokemon as silver medalists in comparison to Pokemon I've used for previous best teams. Of course, like always, there will be no egg moves, no trade evolutions, legendaries, or version exclusives. That way, everyone will have access to this team in some way or another. Every Pokemon will be available to use before the post game. Move sets will also be provided, and all moves are considered as long as they are available before the post game. One more thing. I will not be including the important trainers each Pokemon does well against. At this point, I've done it so many times, and I think you guys have a general idea of what types do well against what. The team will be able to do well against all the important battles, meaning the gym leaders, elite four members, champion, rivals, evil team, evil team, etc. That's pretty much it though. So that said, let's just hop in. Starting off, we have our starter. Now, I created a community post in regards to this topic. Considering we have alternate starter best teams for pretty much every game at this point, I was debating on whether or not I wanted to use one. So I asked you guys, and lo and behold, you guys wanted one. When it comes to which starter I chose, it obviously came down the two choices, being Charizard and Blastoise. As far as the more underrated one between the two, I came to the conclusion of Blastoise. No disrespect to Charizard, it's just fire types in Kanto don't have as much viability as they do in later gens, whereas in Sinnoh, Infernape pretty much decimates the entire game. Also for a flying type, I already have an option in mind. So it came down to Blastoise, and I felt out of the three starters, it was definitely the most underrated. Lapras, in my opinion, is the best water type to use in a fire red and leaf green playthrough, but Blastoise is still pretty solid. I would say out of all three starters, it's the most balanced. Out of all the water types, Blastoise still holds up as one of the top three best options in my opinion. Also considering Starmie in fire red and leaf green is version exclusive. I think you guys have a pretty good idea of what Blastoise does though. So with that, let's hop into the moveset. The moveset we have for Blastoise is the same exact one I used for the Blastoise best team. Surf, Ice Beam, Strength, and Bite. Surf is the best stab option for Blastoise, and the HM for it can be obtained in the Safari Zone at the Secret House. Ice Beam is of course what every water type needs for coverage, and the TM for that can be bought at the Celadon Game Corner. With the VS Seeker, money shouldn't be an issue to grind. Strength is another HM that can be obtained via the Safari Zone. This time though, you have to get the Warden's teeth and give them back to him. It's pretty disgusting by the way. <gasps> Lastly is Bite, and that can be learned via level up at 19. Up at number 2 is our Flyer, which this time, it's gonna be Firo. I always have the debate of which Flyer is best for Fire Red and Leaf Green, Firo or Dodrio. I personally think it's Dodrio, but Firo is literally a smidge behind it by a tiny little hair. Spiro can be found literally right after you get Squirtle on the route next to Viridian City. From there, Spiro can be evolved into Firo at level 20. Firo may be the team's flyer, and in some cases, some people view it as filler due to that role. But having the physical attack and speed it has makes it a force to be reckoned with. I'll show you what I mean with its moveset. Firo's moveset is Return, Fly, Aerial Ace slash Drill Peck, and Steel Wing. Return is the strongest normal type attack Firo can get if we don't count Hyper Beam, which has to be recharged. The TM for it can be obtained on Route 12 in the building right below Lavender Town. Aerial Ace is the best flying stab Firo can get until Drill Peck. The Aerial Ace TM can be found on the route right before entering Rock Tunnel. At level 40, it learns Drill Peck, which will replace Aerial Ace. Third is Fly, which of course is essential for all transportation. The HM for that can be found right above the cycling road on the Celadon side in a remote house. You will need Cut to access it though. 
Lastly is Steelwing, and the TM for that can be found in the Safari Zone. Next up is a Pokemon that can be found as early as the Viridian Forest, Butterfree. Of course, I'm kidding. No offense to Butterfree fans. Pikachu can be found in the Viridian Forest though, and has a relatively low encounter rate. What I find pretty underrated about Pikachu is that it can learn Thunderbolt via level up. I would actually say due to this, Raichu may in some cases be better than Jolteon. Though I still like Jolteon more because it has more special attack and speed. Once Pikachu gets to level 26, it gets Thunderbolt, which then I would evolve it. The Thunderstone can be bought from the Celadon department store, and boom, you got your Raichu. As far as movesets go, the electric Pokemon in this game have rather shallow move pulls, so I did my best with the options I had. Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Brick Break, and Double Team. Thunderbolt is the best stab it can get. And like I said previously, it can be learned as a Pikachu at level 26. Thunder Wave can be learned as early as level 8 as a Pikachu. Having Paralysis is pretty nifty, and sometimes can prove to be quite useful with an opponent or by capturing wild Pokemon. Brick Break is next, and the TM for that can be obtained from the SSN. Lastly, there's Double Team, and this move is here because we're limited to what we can do. Evasion is pretty fun to spam, and can sometimes actually be pretty game breaking. The TM for it can be found in the Safari Zone. At the second half of the team, we have a Pokemon that has technically been here before, except this time, she will be joining us. Nidoking's female counterpart, Nidoqueen. Nidoran female can actually be found in both games, however it appears more frequently in Leaf Green versus Fire Red. She can be found on Route 3 right before traversing Mount Moon. The Moonstone to evolve it can also be found in Mount Moon. If you guys are familiar with how Nidoking works, Nidoqueen isn't really all that different. The stats really don't change all that much between the two, except Nidoking has a bit more offensive power, but not by much. Nidoqueen is a tad more defensive though. Similarly to Nidoking, Nidoqueen gets a pretty good normal type attack at level 22. Except instead of getting thrash like Nidoking, Nidoqueen gets body slam. With that, you can also still get Nidoqueen as early as the second batch. So you already have a fully evolved Pokemon by the time you get to Misty. Let's cover its moveset. Dig slash Earthquake, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, and Flamethrower. Nidoqueen has an insane amount of coverage, and it definitely shows here. Dig is the first ground type attack you will want to grab. The TM for that can be obtained from beating the rocket grunt from the messed up house in Cerulean City. You will want to use this until you get Earthquake, which can be obtained after Giovanni in his gym battle. All three coverage moves can be bought from the Celadon game corner like I said earlier. And with the VS Seeker, this shouldn't be all that bad. You can actually make this easier by getting the amulet coin. The downside is that you need to capture 40 Pokemon. If you want to do that, the item can be rewarded to you from one of Professor Oak's aides at the building going in the cycling road from the Celadon side. Next, we pretty much have Snorlax Jr., is what I like to call it, Clefable. Now, in some aspects, I actually see Clefable better than Snorlax, due to it being able to use more coverage and actually having the special attack to do so. Clefairy can be found in Mount Moon, and can then be evolved into Clefable immediately with the Moonstone. Another Moonstone can be found in Mount Moon as well. Clefable may not have Snorlax's high attack, but like I said, the coverage to me is what really matters. Plus, you can have Clefable at the same time as Nidoqueen. Now, I was actually debating between Clefable and Primeape, as having a fighting type would be pretty good. But as I looked into it, the reason I had Snorlax was due to Sabrina and Agatha. Sabrina is a very strong gym leader, and I wanted something that could tank her attacks while also being able to dish some stuff out back. Clefable isn't as specially bulky as Snorlax, but it's still pretty good. 70 physical attack also may not be the greatest, but that doesn't particularly matter when Sabrina's entire team is so physically frail. Agatha's ghost types also follow suit. Clefable's moveset consists of Strength, Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, and Flamethrower. Strength is Normal Stab, and I've already explained where to get that earlier. Shadow Ball is the key move here against Sabrina and Agatha. I know I said I wouldn't be covering what each Pokemon does well against, but I felt these two battles were important enough. Shadow Ball can be bought from the game corner, and will be a very important move, so hold on to it. The last two moves of Ice Beam and Flamethrower can also be bought once again from the game corner. If you're in a bind, these two coverage moves may come in handy. 
Up last is a Pokemon I mentioned on my top 10 Kanto Pokemon I've never used list, being Kadabra. Although Kadabra isn't fully evolved, it still shreds, and I would deem it as the second best psychic type to use behind Jinx in the set of Kanto games, if we don't count Starmie, which again, version exclusive. Kadabra decimates with its 120 special attack and 105 base speed. Honestly, Kadabra is best team material. It's just Jinx has that ice typing, which helps its case a lot for Fire Red and Leaf Green. Kadabra doesn't have the biggest coverage pull in the world, but that doesn't really matter considering pretty much everything is covered with Nidoqueen and Clefable. Abra can be found on Route 24, right above Cerulean City. Now, you're going to have to be patient though, as teleporting Abra can be a bit of a pain in the ass. But trust me, it's worth it. Having a strong psychic type like this will be very beneficial for this Kanto journey. For Kadabra's moveset, I did the best I could. Psychic, Shockwave, Calm Mind, and Thief. Psychic is of course going to be Kadabra's main stab attack, but until then, use Confusion and Psybeam. Psychic can be learned at level 36, so there's no point in using the Psychic TM. Next is Shockwave, which can be earned after defeating Lieutenant Surge. This, in my opinion, is Kadabra's best coverage. Third is Calm Mind, and this can also be earned by defeating Sabrina. Lastly is Thief, which can be obtained from Mount Moon. Now, Thief may have very low base power, and Shockwave may only have 60, but Calm Mind can power both these up. Kadabra could honestly just use its psychic attacks, and it would have no problem holding its own. But having coverage in Calm Mind just makes it more fun to use. Well, that's pretty much it if we don't consider what each Pokemon does well against. I think this team turned out pretty good, and I hope you guys feel the same. This is going to be a fun series to do, and I'm kind of on a nostalgia trip because it kind of reminds me of the first best team I did all those years ago. Anywho though, what'd you guys think of this team? If you could change any mods, which ones would you pick and why? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. We're finally here in 2023, and I'm super excited for what this year has to offer us. There's potential DLC for Scarlet and Violet on the horizon, and who knows just what else Game Freak may have up their sleeves. It's going to be really exciting times coming up for a Pokemon fan. If you're interested in more Mystic content, check out my TikTok and Mystic Umbreon Shorts YouTube channel. I've got a really fun series starting up there very soon, and of course, have a weekly edition of my Should You Use series focusing on Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. Also, if you're into fan fictions and what ifs, check out Mystic Reads. I offer a ton of creative spoken word content on there, so come join me. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'll see you all next time.